It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. It's another edition of the DJ Roundtable. And, of course, we have everyone here. Our, um, we don't have uh, DJ Fire again tonight. He was hoping to uh, come in, but uh, hopefully he'll come in a little bit later on. Uh, and if you are joining us live uh, or watching this on YouTube, um, if you hear me coughing and hacking, I am actually uh, under the weather a little bit. So, uh, But I'm going to get through this and do this show and have some fun with my, my fellow DJ friends here. And we're going to talk about a few subjects tonight. Uh, and I thought that uh, we're going to start off with, I, I know uh, DJ Cool Thing. You did a video about talking about um, Nick uh, from the East Coast talking about that all the music is not going to have pools anymore. Everything's going to be streamed. And uh, I ran into a customer who I'm talking to, um, looking at the venue and information I got from the venue going over stuff. I sent you guys information from their website and on the uh, web website's information for the venue they bar you from streaming anything at the venue. So I know some DJs use Tidal. I know some DJs who use Spotify. I know DJs who use stuff. And what it looks like, it looks like you might have you might have cellular coverage. I have not been to this venue before, but just because you sell your coverage outside the building, doesn't mean you have it inside of the building because we all know that we can walk into a building and all of a sudden your, your phone goes boop, you're in never, never land. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, uh, you're using up your resources for that if you're going to stream all night long and you're not guaranteed upload or download speed either. So my question to you is to the panel, since again, that is the, the, the thing here for uh, tonight's first part of the show. If you run into a venue that says you cannot stream, and again, you use streaming services such as Tidal, and there's a few other streaming services, do you forego that? Just make sure you have your library as much as possible? Or do you say, okay, forget it, grab your phone, turn the hotspot on, and hope for best? Uh, so, Hunter. I'm yeah, going to start yeah. with you because I know you, you did the video on uh, YouTube, which is a good video, oh, yeah. by the way. Great video. And again, you guys have not done so already. Go to these guys' YouTube channels. Make sure you click like and subscribe to their channels. And make sure you click a like, subscribe down here, too. So, Hunter, oh. you're the first one in a hot seat tonight. <laughs> Let's see. For years, I've been using music mainly on my hard drive here, this Lacey hard drive. But after what happened to me, losing all my music makes me want to go to streaming more and more because I can use a service like Tune My Music and sync up all my playlists and, and I'm ready to go. So I do like streaming after what happened to me, losing all my music, having to gain it all back. And it's just a pain. But there is services like Beatport and BeatSource where you can actually download the music offline in an offline locker. And recently it's like 1,000 track limit, but they're pretty soon they're going to do unlimited offline tracks. You can put your entire library offline from BeatSource and Beatport. And I know, I know, I, I, I again, I'm a virtual DJ DJ. So I and, use yeah, again, yeah, uh, your a virtual virtual DJ has everything, including Beatport and Beat Source. You can oh yeah, yeah, and I, I know that a lot of people talk about for uh, Serato with crates and stuff like that. And I think uh, if I remember correctly, I think uh, Record Box does it too. Uh, Record Box does it for a Pioneer uh, with kind of crates as well. You can store stuff, kind of build everything. I personally, you know, for a wedding. Um, and they have redundancy in case the computer goes down or whatever. I, I think I showed these before. I have, you know, thumb drives I get from Micro Center. You can, you know, I have a Micro Center not far from me. So I get the thumb drive, 16 gigabytes or like four bucks, five bucks, wherever it is per unit. And each each one of my customers get, you know, one of these with their music on there. Plus I have a master copy on this computer. And then I also have the copy on uh, the computer, but I, I still walk in with a flash drive uh, so that way I have three sources just in case something should go awry. But 
do you feel that if you walk into a, a venue that, that says that and you need to have a song, uh, you know, again, downloading a song, uh, that's not the problem. It's the constant streaming of things. Do you feel that you would avoid a venue like that or do you want to go to a venue like that and say, hey, you know what? I'm not worried about it. Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably say that because most of the venues here are more chill, laid back. They don't really care. I mean, it's just the South. They, we really don't care. <laughs> okay. So I've used streaming. Yeah. I've used streaming at both my church, my old church, and of course my house. Okay. But yeah, since some of the venues here are so old, yeah. And yeah, we don't have any Wi Fi uh, routers yet. And if I DJ at a school, their Wi-Fi is just so terrible. Even their cellular data is terrible because they have to limit the kids from using their devices during school. Okay. What about you? If, uh, what about you, DJ? If, yeah, if you, yeah. If you take a look at most DJ software these days, it's starting to lose support for a lot of files like Wave, AIFF, MP3. It's starting to lose support for all that. Okay. I... Really? Yeah. 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 You you want you want to chime in on this? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't stream. Uh, unless it's like for social hour, where they want, like I was saying a while back, if they want some obscure, like you know, like Hawaiian interlude music of some kind in the background, or anything that's really off the beating path that I'm not going to have then yeah, I won't stream it. I will download it. You know, like I will take it on Spotify and save it to that device so I can play it at the event I'm at. But when it comes to streaming, I'm not, I'm not taking a chance. I'm just not. I'm, because if you're in a venue that's got decent internet, it's not a problem. But if you've got one where it's kind of, you know, giving you issues, you can be in the middle of a song and it stops. And with that, Everybody's going to look at you like it's your fault. I don't want to have, if something, you know, goes wrong, it's because I want it to be because I screwed up, not because what I'm using isn't working. So, yeah, I am, you know, with weddings and all that, yeah, I'm pretty in depth with couples before I even get to that final week conversation. I Not that I want to, you know, know everything about them, but from what schools you went to, Concerts you've gone to, favorite, you know, top five favorite bands each, favorite TV shows. I will take that, you know, during a month or two out and start thumbing around through the, like, for example, uh, one wedding, they're really into the office. And when they gave me that, I'm like, okay. And when I looked at the, enti the entirety of every song played in the office, I'm like, I can pretty much play everything here and they're wedding bangers, which was kind of cool. And being, I'm not gonna. Be able, I don't want to be able to stream that, because obviously, if I'm quick mixing through it, I want it all pointed up. So I'm only playing, you know, verse chorus. We're out, and I want all that mark. So I'm not thinking about it when I'm mixing at a wedding. I'm looking and thinking about the next song, or three or four in a row. So the streaming thing, if you can't cue point it, it serves me no good, and the unreliability of it. I'd rather carry around my hard drive have everything that I need for the day, like spotlight dances, must plays on my iPad. And I've got, I've always got two laptops that are both set up identically. And that's why so, BeatSource, and that's why BeatSource gives you that offline locker. So you can have that reliability, but offline it went after the gig. Yeah. See, BeatSource and Beatport thought of everything when it comes to DJing with streaming services. So, uh, uh, Bradley, um, your uh, other half there, your uh, lovely assistant. <laughs> what, what, does, what does she think about all this? Do you like streaming stuff? Yeah, she's a YouTube fan. Well, I'm, I'm a YouTube fan too. You know, we're all YouTube fans here. Yeah, YouTube, channels. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're streaming right now. So, <laughs> yep. but there's a. I think I think for a professional use for music. Again, I I, I, I don't do it, but you know there are people here who do. Yeah. So Matt, Healthy. you sir. I know you stream Spotify for cocktail and dinner, and so, then you uh, mix the rest of the night. Um, I, I think a, a real DJ should have every song that he's going to play for the night, or at least, you know, his library should be downloaded. Um, you shouldn't, the only time 
So I, I, I used to DJ up in the Central Coast, and a lot of the venues there are barn, wet, barn venues out in the middle of nowhere. So you don't have the option to get on Wi-Fi and grab a song. Sometimes you have cell reception, sometimes you don't. If you do, it's usually pretty crappy. So uh, what I would always do, and I still do, is make my playlist on Spotify for cocktail hour, dinner, special songs, whatever, and download them since I have Spotify Premium. So that way, like if I need to, everything's already there. It's downloaded onto the actual device so I can play offline. Um, if I'm somewhere else um, that like, if it's so, I mean, my MacBook Pro is so old that not, I mean, it's, yeah, it is pretty old now. It's like 12 years old, but um, it doesn't connect to my phone as a hotspots Wi-Fi. So if like I need to get a request and I don't want to just mix it in from my iPad, which I can, which I can do because I use an external mixer so I could queue it up that way. Um, I would just, hopefully the venue has Wi-Fi, but I mean, I've never run into that issue. If, if a venue has Wi-Fi, I always try to hop on it anyway, just in case I want to mix in something that maybe is a request from the bride or groom, but I've never had an issue with, you know, saying, Oh, you know, I don't have it. Um, plus, I mean, now, now we, you got the 5g network and I have T-Mobile, which has, I think the best coverage. So I use AT -T. yeah, at and is garbage. Uh, I, it depends. Sometimes they have good coverage, but I, I've never been an AT and T customer. Um, it, it, well, it's like any wireless, and you know, I, I worked in the wireless industry many moons ago, and you know, realistically, you got to think what a cell phone is. A cell phone is a two-way radio device. You're transmitting on a frequency from said device to a tower somewhere. How far that tower is, what's in between you and that tower. You know, the, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's the cows, the field, the grass, the trees, the buildings, uh, wherever else, the, the bird flying overhead, all it causes interference, and that's what can give you shorter signal. And you got to remember the signals now with the 5G, the higher frequencies, it's less distance than it was back in the old cellular days when I worked for Cellular One. I'm dating myself. Uh, when you we went on what's called amps, which is analog. And there was only two two uh, players in a market, channel A, channel B. And, you know, for, and I'm doing some technical gerbil there, but, you know, that's going back into the 90s. And that right there, those cell phones, a car phone was two watts of power and handheld device was less than a quarter watt. The devices today are in milliwatts. They're very low power output. So, it's one of the things that, you know, we don't have the coverage as well as we did previously when you got higher speeds and those higher speeds come at a cost. So it's just one of the things that, you know, when you're looking at stuff, it's, you have to, like you said, Matt, you have to be prepared for it. And, you know, one of the things is that, you know, having one of these little hard drives, again, this is a, this is a one terabyte hard drive, got off Amazon a while ago. I, you know, I have it here. Um, I have I have music on here. I have music videos on here. Um, this is all the clean music videos that I have up until a week ago from pool promo only here. So with promo only, I have music and music videos. Not all the music videos are music videos. Some are lyr lyrical. Some are you know obs you know have uh, obscene obscenities in them. Some of them are um, uh, basically like, you know, recuts and redos and shortens. These are just full on videos from promo only. So when I go through promo only, I put them on a separate drive. This is promo only. So 2020, 2021 and 2022, uh, I still have a little bit more room on this. So I could put some more videos on it, but I, I, you know, constantly do that. And I have this with me. So worse comes to worse, if I watch newer songs, you know, I have this with me, plug it in, you know, if I don't have it in my hard drive. And it's one of the things that, you know, I may have doing be doing video at that very second, but I still get the audio. And again, it's high quality audio as well as high quality video. And thank you uh, for you guys at promo only. You guys do a heck of a job with the, with the videos. I love their, I love their, their service, especially their uh, music service too. And I pay for that, you know, so I can get that service. The, um, and promo only is not a, a sponsor with them. I'm just thanking them because they do a heck of a job. Um, but here's, here's the thing is that 
I, I look at that when I see that I'm like they're restricting they're restricting it that means someone somewhere somehow did something stupid to cause that restriction and my question is what other restrictions are there and I was going through stuff I didn't see any more restrictions than that mm -hmm. they had normal stuff you know talking about fireworks because you know some people want fireworks for stuff you're going to do it outside and you have to you know okay fine great but like if you want to do sparklers do they allow sparklers inside do they allow you know do they allow co2 cannons and I know two DJs here to have sparklers I know one DJ here is uh, co2 cannons you know would this venue if I was offering those services would they allow it or not allow it and that, that those are things like that right there you, you know when there's a venue to have you know you can do something or you can't do something I always feel that those venues uh should be you know again you should note them so you know what you're going into so you go back to it you know exactly what you're getting into but also you should note that the fact uh what restrictions are there and that you you know you understand the venue beforehand you're not breaking any rules or policies or procedure because you don't want to be on the bad dj list <sighs> well, all right anybody else want to add to that you know with what you said it's and I wonder often why, if you're not regularly at a venue, and I I see this with a lot of different DJs and companies, they're not calling the venue and doing a check-in the week of. I mean, now granted, I learned my lesson that that's not always going to be accurate. Even if you're talking to the owner's wife on the phone, it's not always going to be accurate. But I don't want to go in somewhere completely blind, and I'd like to have a small rapport before I show up that day. And like with Sparklers, for example, I did my research around lacrosse and knew the venues I'm at most of all allow them. So when couples are asking me about that or low-lying fog machines or even smoke machines, I already know the answers for 90% of the venues in my area. And with that, or, you know, or the rules of certain venues. And there's one venue and there's a couple I won't go back to, but one was just, the, the venue manager was giving me a hard time because this couple had ordered my real big setup and didn't realize it's going to take me 90 minutes to break it down. And if the venue was on the first floor, get out the door. But we're on the second floor in a super small elevator that you can fit one person in a wheelchair in and that's it. So I'm literally moving a subwoofer, a speaker, and something to the side of it, letting it go down, running down the stairs to get it out, and playing the but they have this rule that DJs have to be out within 45 minutes of their last song. That's not happening. I can't see that happening unless you're using two speakers, two to you know, two tripods, a table, and a uh, you know, a skirt on it. But if you're doing anything else, that's kind of crazy. And actually, one of the couples I had booked there. When they found that out, that, you know, they were doing that switch venues. I'm really stoked about it. And I get to be at the Cargill room instead. You know, good food and all that. <laughs> and well, that's not bad. The other well, part of that is... Yeah. Well, here in South Carolina, we have a subwoofer restriction in some venues because it's small. It's too small for a subwoofer. You know, some subwoofers are too powerful and when I did my cousin Cheyenne's wedding, the owner of the venue said, don't bring a subwoofer. And I was like, that's fine. I don't have a subwoofer anyway. I don't plan on getting one. Well, you so, know, Matt, I, Matt couldn't work there I, because I, the fact that you would want to bring his dual 21s. And I mean, dual 21, it, it, it's Yeah, not they money. would throw you out. If you were here in Conway and you DJ that one venue, 104 Laurel, you would get kicked out because you have subwoofers. Happily. See, I won't. I won't do a gig without subs anymore unless I know how small the room actually is. Right. If it's like a 25 to 50 head room, okay, I'm cool with it. Because I won't have to push my mains. But if it comes to it, I'm bringing my subs so I don't have to push the mains that hard and get a decent balance on everything. And you only got thumps, so you really need to push those. <laughs> oh, they're not bad. I Part and parcel, I'm hard on my gear. And with as many gigs as I'm putting them through every year, I've had the thumps I'm using now 
almost yeah four this will be my fourth year and there's still they there's nothing wrong with them so and one of them got the one i use at a bar i didn't realize i was under a heat lamp one night this is still what i was drinking oops and the, the top of it's melted <laughs> but the speaker still works fine so i'm like yeah okay whatever and it's taken that it's taken that all of them have taken the dip out of the van at least once and none of them have gotten busted so I, I, I'm happy with the way they've held up. I'm definitely looking at those white ones you sent me because I have, once weddings really start picking up again, I'm going to buy a few more toys. My toad is coming, but yeah. And that, that you know, the one thing to go back to um, with everything is if we as DJs look at stuff and do things the right way, you know, in a perfect world, you know, get in and out of a venue, we're, we'll be out as quickly as we possibly can because we're not getting paid for it. One of the things that, you know, Tracy and I do, I, I, you know, again, I'm blessed I have Tracy with me. But the other part of that, and there's two of us, you know, taking two carts out, you know, one time. Um, and we can move, move stuff. I can move the stuff here and she can take it out from there. So, you know, I could, you know, do some stuff. She can move some stuff. And if it's a big sup, we bring one of our employees in. That's why we have a couple employees to supplement and add an extra person. Uh, if we're doing multiple setups, again, have an extra employee. It's one of the things, again, that's, you know, charging for that service is the reason why that we as, you know, customers, I mean, customers, we as companies need to charge those fees because the fact that people, you know, don't understand that we're going into a venue and yeah, there are venues that have restrictions on what, where, when, how, how often you could do things. And if you don't follow those policy procedures, you're not going to go back. But not only that, you know, they could also incur a charge. And there's venues who will charge if you're too late. You know, one of the things I was reading in the restrictions on there, they give 10 hours. They do not give you overtime. And if you go over those 10 hours, they charge for it. So it's one of those things that I don't want to see a <coughs> customer incur a charge. So it's, it's one of the things, you know, it, again, doing due diligence, talking to the facility. Uh, I always call a couple weeks prior to, cause you know, make sure you get my insurance and stuff like that. If you need it or not. But it's, it's one of the things you know, I feel that a lot of DJs don't do because a lot of venues are like, Oh, wow. You usually DJs don't call. They just show up. And it's like, why not do your homework beforehand? Um, so, uh, Matt, you usually talk to a venue prior to showing up or you just, uh, show up day of, or do you have a phone call, um, email? Spoke not you, not, I mean, I scope it out obviously to see where I'm going and what the load ins like. Um, like usually the coordinator will send me, you know, if the venue needs insurance, they'll send any sort of regulations. Very rarely do they ever say no subwoofers. That's pretty rare here. Um, there's like one venue that I DJed at once that didn't allow him, but then I literally watched a gig log last night of a guy that was just there and he had J8s with the subs. So I think that was just a, a BS rule um, because the, the building is huge and super secure. It's nowhere near any houses. So I don't know why that, that rule was a thing, but anyway, um, less equipment for me, but I, the only time I run into issues is when they book a big package and then the venue is like, you know, we only allow our DJs to set up two hours ahead of time. And then we usually what I'll do is like, you know, I'll work with the venue and be like, hey, you know, this is a big package, we need a little more time. But sometimes I just show up like four hours early and like ne I've never run into an issue, uh, knock on wood. The only time it's it's tricky is when like a venue tries to double book and like they have a conference before a wedding or something in the morning. And it's like they shouldn't be doing that anyway because that's just bad. Um, but you know, I, I try to make my couples know, like, but usually what I do, and this has worked sometimes is like, if I tell them like, Hey, you know, we have very limited time. We're going to have to be setting up the photo booth during cocktail hour, or, you know, maybe we'll set up lighting during cocktail hour. I have to pay to bring, bring an extra person. They usually just, you know, offer some extra money or whatever. So, uh, it always works out, but I mean, most of the places I'm at are not hotels. Um, they're dedicated wedding venues or um, reception spaces. So you can kind of show up whenever um, because usually the first person to get there is not the DJ. Um, 
contrary to Rick Webster, uh, usually the florist is first to arrive <laughs> or, um, or rentals. If they're doing table rentals or decor, um, I always see them there first. So yeah, you, you usually have, I show up, I yeah, use three hours. Times, of time. um, a lot of times also the, um, uh, well, the venue manager usually there early too, because usually they can stuff ready. But, um, I always see early too is the photographers are there usually, uh, yeah. because the bride is there on site getting ready, especially with the ceremony, they're right here getting taking pictures of them in the bridal suite, getting makeup and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, most, like I said, most venues don't have issues. Uh, watch it later. Um, no venues really have issues over here with setup times. Um, so luckily, uh, I have a big package. We have two, three weddings this weekend. Uh, both mine and DJ Unstoppable is doing one for us. Uh, they're both pretty big packages. So it's going to be a big day on uh, Saturday. And then I got to wake up and go all the way to San Diego on Sunday. So yay, lack of sleep. But we get to break out the new audio book, audio guest books. Um, I finished the website, finished the flyers, uh, postcards for the wedding show I have coming up. And I'm going to offer it, not offer it, they accepted it. We're giving it to them for free for this Sunday to get some cool footage for a promo video. And come Monday, you'll see a bunch of spam for it. And uh, hopefully it takes off like I'm expecting it to, hopefully. Because um, I spent way too much time on that website with Wix. But I think uh, I like the finished product. It looks clean and modern and fancy. Now, I got I to add some pictures on to our website and to the knot too. That's the other thing I noticed. I got I got some older pictures on their knot. I got do some people. Stuff. Have you ever tried to reach out to the knot support? They're horrible. I, and and especially when I'm trying to give them money, I'm like, I emailed my account rep saying, "Hey, I want to upgrade to the spotlight." Never got back to me. I'm trying really? to give you money. They always are after for money. money. They want the money. Usually, give us money. Give us money. We want every time. Give us money. Give us money. I I don't know. I I very rarely rely like. The Knot's a good landing page for me, but most of the inquiries come through my website where they say, oh, we saw you on the Knot or uh, we found you there. So like I have it, but like so many more of my inquiries come through my website now that I I'm maybe considering, I might bump it up to the, the spotlight just to see if there's a difference. But really around here, the pages that get a lot of traffic on the Knot are the ones that have a couple hundred reviews. Um, you know, I'm at 75, so I'm almost to 100, but um yeah. So I, I the the big thing is that you tout what you have, and as someone who has, I when I say I'm, I know I'm over a hundred reviews, but it's, it's your it's your rating. Are you a five point oh? Are you a four point eight? Of course, I'm a five point oh. Again, if, you're, if 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 you're in the if you're four on up, you're doing a really good. You know, I I'm always five point oh. You know, if you, yeah. you're five point again, it's it's one of the things that we, we strive for it. But I look at it as a not even for the SEO, but it drives it like you said, it drives customers to my website, and I want them to you know contact us. But it, if it drives people, it drives people. And uh, Brettley, do you do uh, do you do the knot for your business, or do you just have the free page? Ever after the company has a paid listing on Wedding Wire, the knot. I do free listings for DJ Brettley on Zola, Wedding Wire, The Knot. And I, I will say I will pay for Zola leads of all the three. And I've noticed their leads are the most qualified of them all. So how, how many, wait, how many leads you get from Zola? I think I got like, I see like at least 25, 30 last year. Really, I got and I, got I. But I'll go to from Lacrosse. I'll go to Green Bay, and I'll and I'll also go as far as like Milwaukee, Madison, up north to Eau Claire. So it opens my market up here for where people are hitting me up from. Now, part you know with the Green Bay thing, the last time I did Stadium View, I got hit up a few times. Because they saw me there, went on Zola, and then hit me from there. So that's that was one plus to having the Zola page. But mainly, I just want all the pages out there, so I have more, you know, looking up DJs in my market, and my in the Google searches, I'm always coming up first. And it's because of how much I, how much SEO I have out there to throw into the wind. 
And so I, I realized that me and me and my business partner were joking about this today, both for the company and for myself, because, you know, the recent, you know, breakup and all that, and, you know, me having my head up my blank, I kind of blew off my STO a little bit for January and or uh, February rather, and didn't follow my plan the way I wanted it to. So I feel a little behind the eight ball on getting it, you know, getting motivated to start all rolling for shooting for you know December and January bookings, so to speak, and not and kind of shying away from the clubs now that club season's winding down this month. So that's kind of where I'm lacking in my marketing right now, and I really have to reanalyze it and go over my last year's numbers, you know, based on my hits and the data I saved for the posts I made during the time of year to get a better idea of how I want to play it this year. Yeah, and that that's the important stuff. And I, I know, um, again, marketing is very important and, and try and get, you know, people to come to you, trying to yeah, come to you one way or another. And Yeah, yeah, I don't use I, any of them. I, I, I know... Yeah, I, I know use, you don't. I know you don't advertise outside of because you, again, you primarily yeah. do friends, family, people you know, but yeah. and you have business cards you give out, and you do. I, I know you're active and stuff, but when you advertise to those people, how do you? How is it? It's, it's all just it's one hundred percent referral. But who is your biggest person who referred you the most? What would you say is your biggest person, your biggest asset for referrals? Would you say it's it, 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 the, uh, you know, would you say it's, it, is it your parents that help drive you that? Is it a certain cousin that helps you? Is it the, the church that helps you? It is was. It, who's it your biggest was, friend? It, it was because they were the ones who made me a DJ because they got me to DJ a, uh, or play music at a, a block party, a, bur a block party about four or five years ago. And that's what made me want to become a DJ full time. So it was because of them and they, were asking, hey, can you DJ our wedding? Can you DJ this? Can you DJ that? And started growing. But now that I left that church, it's starting to slow down and not getting many gigs. But mm -hmm. pretty soon, I'll, pretty soon I will, because I did hand out business cards to people at my new church. Well, there you go. Again, that's that's all that's all marketing. And yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, I know you you said talk talking to you a little beforehand. You have yeah, coming up a thirtieth birthday party. Oh, coming yeah, thirtieth birthday party next week. Yeah. They were the same people, yeah, that I DJed for for Allie and James's wedding, which they are now divorced. Um, I DJed the fiftieth birthday party. It's the same family. So they, I, I heard, I heard there's a rumor there might be a gig log for that. Oh yeah, they are. It is. There's, there's gonna, gonna be a gig log. Okay. I heard, I heard the rumor. Word on the street. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's, it's not a rumor. It's true. I always do gig logs. I always, like to I always like to document my experience. We 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 will look forward to seeing it. Just like Matt always does his gig log with the DJ air horn looking up in the air. Another gig log, you know. It's got to do his thing. Know. Everybody's got their stick. Every has their stick. Me, like I have my stick on here when I that. when I intro. Every has their stick, and you got that you got to keep it to your, true to yourself. Yeah, and there'll be a gig log for the grand <laughs> yeah. There'll be a grand reopening of Sam's Corner really soon, like a gig log. In my uh, hot dog costume. <laughs> there you go. They're, gliz on. they're glizzies, not hot dogs. What was it? They're called glizzies. Glizzies. Glizzies with a G. You've never heard of a glizzy? No. No, oh, because you're from Chicago. Over in the South, they call them glizzies. No, hot we dogs are glizzies. We, we, yeah, we call them hot dogs. We call them. We, yeah, we call them hot dogs here in South Carolina. Maybe I Florida? Know. I don't know. Like Georgia? I don't know. Maybe it's just the cool kids calling that. Well, maybe. I'm. Uh, uh, but I will be doing a gig here. log. Should I, uh, not fun for our hot dog, so it's like, you know. My but, referral stream is is uh, probably, I get a lot of repeat, um, like the wedding I'm doing this Saturday is the third referral from uh, a wedding I did in June. So I did one for a couple in June. I did their holiday party in December. I did their friend's wedding in November. And now I'm doing their other friend's wedding on Saturday. Cool. Um, and so I get a lot of like repeat client referrals like that. Um, I have a couple of photographers that shoot stuff my way. We're a preferred vendor at one venue. Um, 
because uh, I, I don't know I, I don't we don't really have like preferred vendor lists too much um out here it's not a, like a super big thing uh, most venues are, allow any dj to come in and yeah um well, no, no, like them. like here for our preferred vendor list they will allow any dj to come in but they, if you they ask you you know what dj would you prefer well you know it, it's tbm productions it's you know DJ Salsas, it's DJ Brentley, it's, uh, you know, DJ, uh, it's Cool Thing Entertainment. And out East, this is one of the things I, 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 I don't do, but a lot of venues out East charge yeah. a fee uh, to be on their uh, preferred vendor list. So, it, you know, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, being a preferred vendor is not, not a bad thing, but having, it, it gets another, uh, you know, referrals, but Having those referrals, especially photographers, and having people who know you who have been at your venues, not your venues, at your uh, events, and uh, seeing you your work, that's a huge thing. Do you uh, now? I, I again, I know you guys have much bigger you know followers on YouTube than I do. Do you think? Do you see a lot of people, a lot of your customers, watching your YouTube videos and getting business from the, the videos from YouTube? Uh, some, I get some that like, when I talk to them on the phone, they're like, oh, we watched some of your YouTube videos. Um, so some, it's not like a huge thing, but a lot of them come from Instagram. So like, they know like what they're, that's why like a lot of my events or weddings are like EDM focused. You know, I don't get older couples. I don't like DJing for what I call generic white bread weddings. Um, which is like, you know, the, your crappy wedding music uptown funk and dancing queen and uh celebration and etc that you know what i mean uh i like more like high energy like dance floor packed like edm fist pumping like that's that's what i go for and that's what i try to market towards and it's starting to work because i don't really have I, I get other people have like text like messaged me after posting my stories they're like oh you always get all these like edm weddings i'm like it's just because the way i i tailor my page is that's who i'm going after i could do any wedding any genre um anywhere but i prefer to do country style. music wedding i can do country i used to line dance every thursday oh well, there you go edm oh, to country there you go right there exactly you get you get uh there's a group cheat codes that um one of the stories i posted today uh, with a guy dancing I'm trying to find the guy who knows the lyrics like that's the there's a band or an EDM group called Cheat Codes and they do a lot of crossovers where it's country and and electronic and they, I love they that some, they do some really good remixes uh, Cheat Codes they do they, they do, do some really good remixes too and then uh DJ Adrian E thank you he uh, actually looked it up and posted in the chat uh a glizzy is a hot dog it originally is a <laughs> slang term for a gun in the Washington DC metropolitan area which is that's basically Virginia. I, I've been. To, I don't know if you guys have been to DC. I was in DC for three weeks for training um, a while back, and it is even though it's northern, it's southern. It's really weird there because they say y'all and stuff yeah, like that. We, I was yeah, in uh, Charlie, Virginia. Yeah, y'all. We say y'all. It's really big down here in South Carolina. Oh man, Everyone, yeah. Yeah, that's people here say y'all. That that that's that's the uh that's the, the part. Part. Say y'all. but uh it's also yeah, uh known as a DMV. But according to Hip Hop DX, it became a nickname for hot dogs because of the length of the uh barbecue staple is similar to the extension of a magazine of a firearm. And he used to wear clip, which is not a clip, it's a magazine. And you know it's a firearm, so they're to talk about the length of a of a weapon. So it, it's interesting. Uh, again, that's something I have not heard. I'm, I, you know, again, I'm not in law enforcement. Maybe law enforcement officer out there. You know, if you're a law I don't enforcement know who, officer, I don't know this, who coined it. it. I don't know uh, who coined it. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. But yeah, that's uh, that is interesting. Thank you so much, uh, DJ and Adrian, Adrian E for uh, looking it up. We used to have a place here um, that would put it was like a gourmet hot dogs type place where they would put like they would do like it was Asian inspired, so they would do like bull bull uh, beef bulgogi on a hot dog, <laughs> and they would do you know all these crazy combos to where they're like hot dogs are art pieces versus like just your standard hot dog. 
Well, um, uh, your the hot, the hot dog place in L.A. Uh, Pinks, they're kind of like yeah, kind of like they're, that. They're, kind I mean, of they're, like, they're more they're more like laid back. Like they're famous for their chili dog. Um, they they do other hot dogs too, but like this one, these were like works of art. You know, like executive chef made hot dogs for like nine bucks or ten. Bucks, that's basically but, what Sam. Yeah, that's basically what Sam's Corner is. It's yeah. basically your average hot dog. But you yeah. put you want. Yeah, they're right. putting gold leaf on there, and they're putting you know making you know making out of you know. They were good. Uh, they were good. Yeah, the place went out of business wagyu, though. Wagyu beef and stuff like that. They're doing the crazy high end, you know, hundred dollar hot dogs, three hundred dollar hot dogs, or uh, was it Salt Bay's? Uh, I saw yeah. a thing on YouTube. Uh, Salt Bay's got a, a restaurant at his like gold covered uh, steak is like seventeen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars. You know when they come out and they do the little salt thing, you know. And, you know, hey, you know what? People are going to go there. They want to go see that. You know, Gordon Ramsay, all these famous chefs have these really cool places. And they charge a lot of money for their food. And again, some of it's very oh, extravagant. Oh, 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 yeah. We actually ate at Hell's Kitchen back at, on Christmas Eve. And How was um, it? How was it? Was, it? It was so good, but expensive. <laughs> Everywhere down the Las Vegas Strip is so darn expensive. Even Walgreens and CVS is so expensive. Well, it is a tourist trap. So, you're you're going there. You're you're a tourist. You're trapped in there. <laughs> so, talk about tourist traps and traps. Period. Um, I know that this past week or so, um, a lot of guys posted about products from certain manufacturers online. Um, and I know that uh, some of the manufacturers uh, are putting new product out. They're trying to get stuff ready for NAM come up in April. Uh, they're trying to get stuff ready to get out there. And I, 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 I don't like, you know, talking rumors and stuff like that. I don't like when people um, basically put stuff out there. Shouldn't be putting stuff out there. But if you, um, if you saw someone doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, do you call them out on that? I and mean, what I mean by doing something, they're not supposed to be doing. You, if you go to a venue, and this is what I'm referring to our area, um, if you go to a venue and you see a photographer who is just lazy and leaves stuff on the ground, a tripping hazard, do you say anything to them? Do they leave bad ears in the ground? Are they, you know, or do you I just go into a place just, that the the, the restroom is covered yeah. in, you know, in water and the floor and toilet papers all over the place and you know oh. it just unkept unclean do you do you say something to someone or do you just walk past it and just continue going on what would you usually do for a venue like that i just ignore it and just continue doing my job okay i don't dj at venues that have dirty bathrooms <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving scenarios <laughs> I, I, i'm just giving scenarios and again I, i've been to a lot of nice places and People screw things up very quickly. I could tell you there's a lot of great venues that the owners have a lot of pride. And I've seen people, uh, you know, in restrooms, you know, someone has vomited all over the place. You know, I've seen people that, you know, I've walked in there and seen people stay, taking you know, toilet paper or paper towel stuff and into the sink, try and flood and turn the water on and walk out, you know, just being mean, uh, malicious people. Uh, but do you, and the reason I'm going into with, with this stuff is, you know, again, people doing the wrong things out there. Do we try to correct that? Do we try to ignore uh, those people and, you know, shut them out from doing bad things and say, hey, you're not supposed to be doing this and call them out for doing the bad things? Or do we just go along with it and say, hey, I, I just not pay attention to it? I don't pay attention because um, when I used to DJ weddings like a couple of years ago, and yeah, you know, yeah, I've they've always picked the nicest ven the yeah, we picked the nicest venues that were really clean and I've never really experienced any problems like that. Okay. I'll tell somebody like if I need to, like if it's before the event started, then yeah, like saying, Hey, you know, you might want to have somebody go check that. Um, because I know, you know, I want the couple to have the best time and their guests too. So if you know there's something that needs to be addressed and I can't do it or I don't have a key or whatever, like you know, I try to help out during the actual wedding. That's not my responsibility. <laughs> well, plus, and that's not it. It's not our job to clean up after someone else. You know, 
if we make a mess, we yeah, we should clean it up. That's that's our responsibility. But I feel that you know, telling the management of the facility that they should clean things up. But um, what about you, Bradley? Do you would you go and tell? Yeah, actually, and this goes back, you know, like how we're saying where we get our gigs from, referrals. More often than not, yeah, okay, I, and I'll bring up celebrations on the river here in La Crosse because I'm there so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, I mean, knock on wood, they hand me my gigs on a silver platter practically. I have to make sure I sign them and deliver what celebrations both I can do. But the other part of that being, I've been at weddings where, you know, there was the wedding a few weeks and yeah, in January, where all the older women were pu- were partying harder and puking <laughs> everywhere. I'm not gonna. I didn't, I couldn't go clean it, obviously, because I. But where my booth is set up there more often than not, I'm in prime you know space to see everything going on. I'm looking down at the entire floor, and if I see you know when I saw the two women walking out of the bathroom, kind of doing the gaggy thing and wiping their face off. And then seeing another one in the garbage can, I went and told the venue manager immediately, and they got staff on that. When chairs start getting, like I've been at weddings, when chairs start getting thrown around and broken, I've seen the beer turn, the floor turned into a slip and slide with beer. All sorts of things like that, I'm immediately going to the venue. Because one, something stupid could happen and really wreck their day. The last thing they want is one of their friends breaking a chair, then falling out and and stabbing themselves or playing slip and slide on the floor and breaking a rib or something. That's just going to leave a well, bad then, taste. Then, under then you're looking at yourself as liability because then if they get hold of a lawyer. And they start, you know, throwing lawsuits against everyone, against a couple, against you, yep. the photographer, the guy walking down the street. And these are, it's like handing out Tic Tacs. Everyone gets one, you know, it's, it's like Oprah, you get one and you get a lawsuit and you get a lawsuit and we don't want to be part of it. So you might as well mitigate it. But the, the, what I'm going back to is uh, these people online and some of the other um, DJs out there getting information for whatever and, you know, posting online, true, not true, whatever it is. I, I don't I don't understand it. I, I feel that uh, us as DJs should look at that and say, hey, you know, dude, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't I wouldn't post that stuff. I wouldn't put it up there. Um, you shouldn't do that. And, you know, Adrian E says, I absolutely say something to the uh, person, the management, if something's, uh, something is, uh, you know, uh, something's doing something maliciously. And I, I feel that, you know, these people, and I'm not mentioning names, I call people out. I'm just saying in general, <laughs> um, I feel that just like we would call it out for spilled drink, for someone, you know, a bathroom not being kept. I feel we should also do the same thing for the DJs who put on information that shouldn't be out there, in, you know, on, on whatever platform. And like, dude, really? Not, not to be mean or vicious or say something bad, but like, come on, man. You know, why are you giving the information out? Why are you doing that for? And it, it, to me, it's just, you know, I, I, I see that. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of manufacturers out there. Um, again, they have NAMs not right around the corner. Um, I know that, uh, you know, there's other tr- shows coming up, um, you know, like Marquee here in Chicago, uh, and there's another one, you know, the one out in Jersey, uh, you know, Midwest DJ Live, another show, you know, there's a lot of shows out there, and manufacturers need something to showcase those shows, and us as DJs should want to go to those shows to see the new stuff, including, you know, like Pioneer released last night. Their new controller, which I have a question come up for that one in a second here, but I feel that the guys who are giving information out there, who are running back and forth, you know, uh, saying, "Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me," I have information on X, Y, Z. Um, I, I feel that maybe they should, you know, not get the information out, and maybe they should be an adult. Hey, you know what? I got, you know what? I'm not gonna say anything to anyone because, you know, again, why spoil a surprise? It's like. Someone's having a surprise birthday party. You got hired to DJ the surprise birthday party. And you're standing outside the birthday party yelling to everyone walking by because you don't know who it is. Hey, there's a surprise birthday party going on here. There's a surprise birthday party going here. You want to see it? There's a surprise birthday party. And you're like, the the birthday person is walking up and you're spoiling it for them. You know, that's kind of the way I equate it to it. I just don't, I have to call it out a little bit because 
I'm not a fan for the rumor mills and stuff like that. And I, that's why we don't do that here. That's why we don't talk about stuff uh, like that because we want to, you know, spin positivity, but also we want to give out information that is uh, truthful uh, to our to our knowledge. And also, I don't want to, you know, be in you know rumors and stuff like that and guesses. And the reason why also we're going into this is because the fact that the new controller got released last night from Pioneer and $3,200. Um, I know you're shaking your head, Bradley. Um, that's, ridiculous. That's, too, that's way too expensive. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah. You, buy, you can almost, you can almost <laughs> buy the new RCF Dual 18 for that. I think it's 34 or 35. It's not not as powerful as the Dual 18 I have, but they released a new version that's like part of the 808 whatever line. It's called the 8008. Um, it doesn't sound very good uh, when I heard it at NAMM, but you want a Dual 18, 3,500 bucks. Get that instead of a controller. It'll go a lot longer, a lot farther. Nobody cares what controller you have uh, well, when it comes to like, you know, drag again, groove, you know? again, there, it, it, it looks really cool. It looks I, nice. I'll Pioneer, uh, again, I, I, I like Pioneer. I like Denon too. Looks like the Flex um, Four, but not I like, I like Rain. Rain's got some good equipment too. There's a lot of great manufacturers out there. Even I mean, I'm on top of old Denon, the new Denon or the new Mark. I'm glad that because Denon was getting stagnant for a long time when they, they merged with Newmark and are the same uh, family. They updated stuff. They have a lot of new new cool technology, which Hunter has. You know, he has Newmark. Yeah, the the mixed string pro. I only bought yep. it because of the price. And that, that uses a lot of technology. They you know that it's from Denon. Uh, Denon always has been the premium line. To me, the top three are Pioneer, Denon, and Rain. Those are your top three controllers. Um, this one right here, thirty two hundred dollars, and I have an XZ. Um, I like the XZ more because the fact that it has the microphone controls, it has a built in feedback suppressor. Yes, it can run standalone. This is also a standalone unit too. You just put you know a thumb drive in. Or, like I had before, you could plug a hard drive in. It actually has a USB port in the back. You could directly plug in a, 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 a hard drive into it. And it has a USB-C port to plug in a computer. So it can do software, but it's primarily designed to be a standalone unit. You don't need a laptop for it. It's very pretty. It's very cool looking. It is heavy. If you read the specs on it, it's like, you know, 30 some odd pounds. Uh, it's pretty thick. It's pretty big. The question is I have for you guys um, for tonight for the quick question. Um, is there a controller out there that you're eyeing right now or you're waiting for a new controller that may come to market sometime soon? I don't want if, there, if it's something that's not on the market that is not shown that's going to come on right now that you're guessing or something like that. Say, hey, you know, new Pioneer controller or whatever, you're waiting for a replacement for or whatever. Uh, don't look at any rumors or someone said, hey, there's a new uh, uh, controller coming out from Jones controller system that's model XYZ and it could not be that name. Uh, we're, you know, stay away from that stuff. But if you're looking for a new controller, and I know, Hunter, you're probably not because you just got your Mixed Dream oh. Pro. And but, of course, I got the uh, DDJ four hundred. I'm still pretty good with the four hundred. But if you wanted to, if you if you if if you had the money in your hand, would you get a new controller? And if so, what controller yeah, um, would you get? I would definitely get a. I might get the replacement for the SR two, like an SR two replacement. That's okay, so the, the newer model. Yeah, newer model SR two, like an SR three. Okay. I would definitely love to see that a Pioneer DJ DDJ SR3. Okay. If they okay. Yeah, so they Brett, Brett Lee, what about you, sir? I definitely want the new what is it the Flex DDJ 1000 or the FLX. It's they have a new one to replace the DDJ 1000. So yeah, because that's become my main go-to at weddings. I'm not bringing my RSD out. Sorry, it's my favorite deck and it. I don't want somebody wrecking it because they don't have a replacement deck for it. And with that, because I'm doing more clubs that are plug and play, I want an A9 and a pair of CDJs. Okay. Uh, that the game, uh, I'm going back to a club here in Lacrosse and going up to <coughs> Icon Stevens Point. 
and a couple more I'm in talks with right now. Yeah, everybody's either got you know the current uh, Nexus two or are going to immediately upgrade to the A nine. At this point, I'd rather have it to practice on at home, and or when I go to clubs, have something that that's is that stable meant for shows. And like I see the new controller, and I'm like, what you what you said a, a little while back, it's great if you're doing a pre-planned set because you can just go click, click, click straight down the road or row and don't have to think about what's in front of you. But the practicality of it is I need something where I can use my laptop and actually don't have the XTJ and my laptop don't seem to like each other. It gets glitchy at times and I'm using my 2019 MacBook Pro with an i9 and it's still... It was having, and it was while I was doing video and the deck, but even still, it was a little glitchy. So the all-in-one thing, I would just as soon have, you know, a, the Nexus or the A9 with the setup, and okay. that's kind of where I'm looking at this summer. And then Matt, I know you love your controller that you have now. You're not a Pioneer fan, uh, but you don't mind rain so much. I mean, like to me, what what is like. People that upgrade controllers or have multiple ones, like I get it having a backup, but like, is a controller going to make you a better DJ? No, probably not though. Um, so it like, might. Me, I, I want something that works and it works for what I need it to. Oh. And I don't need a million buttons and dials. And here, here's my main thing. I don't like, I don't like a trim. I like a gain knob. Um, I, I don't mess with, um, I mean, I, I use my gain knobs to mix, um, and I always have my faders all the way up. So my controller never redlines. I've never had a redlining problem. Um, I control volume with my master, usually keep it at 12 o'clock. And then if I need to bump it more, I can, if I need to bump the gains here or there, I have the external mixer, just like seeing the way that those pioneer controllers work. is just, I don't know. I've played with a few of them. I, I, they're not a few. I wouldn't consider ever buying them, but um, I did like the rain one, um, the one with the motorized platters. That was kind of cool. Uh, but again, like I, it's to me, like I need a controller that's that will work. It's sturdy. It's built well, and it does what I need it to do, and it mixes well, and it's MIDI mappable because my software is all MIDI based. So I have my software that works for me. I wouldn't be able to get Serato to work the way I want it to. So. That's why I'm fine. And, you know, there's very few uh, drivers that actually are still working on like the level of computer that I use for DJing. So I'm glad that the Hercules one had a driver for mountain lion or whatever operating system I'm still working with. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe in five years, maybe when it's time to finally upgrade computers, maybe, maybe I'll look at something else, but we'll run this thing to the ground. And speaking of drivers, the DDJ 400 just uh, Pioneer just stopped support for the up the uh, newer drivers for the 400. There you go. So a couple well, of comment, couple comments it's here. Or so it's no longer supported. A couple comments here I have, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, I would say something to the I staff to correct the issue regarding to the venue. If it's a venue, uh, they they should know. If it's a vendor, they should know better. Um, and talking about the new controller. Uh, not worth the money. Uh, they uh, they're eyeing the Rain Four or the One Thousand SRT, uh, and the Rain One is pretty nice. That I think that's the Rain One you're talking about. The uh, uh, platters for uh, yeah. for Rain, is. which is is you know it kind of makes you feel like you're having two twelve uh, hundreds. It has that kind of similar feel when they're spinning. And the the Rev Seven does that too, right? The spinning platters. So and it gives and they're in battle mode. So I just, I just want my side. My thing is, I want my table to look like there's a lot of really expensive stuff on there, but it's not all too expensive, and that's what I have. <laughs> so like when people come up, it's a lot of buttons and dials. So like I have my my controller, my little MIDI drum pad. Um, I've got my other laptop and I've got my music laptop. So there's a lot on my table. So it looks like yeah, there's a lot going on here. So when somebody walks up. Oh wow, that's a lot. So yeah, my control well, is smaller. It is our command. Look at everything else. I uh, see here. I'm very happy with the Pioneer SR2. Uh, so if if it's not, it's not for me, however, if I had a choice to answer the question, new controller, I'd probably go to a Rev Seven. Oh wow. So you want a battle style DJ? 
uh, you know, set up. That's what it's designed for. It's a battle style battle. DJ. So I'll be like, I don't like, it'll be hard for me to use the motorized platters. I've always used state like steady platters. Yes, yeah, Ruger stable ones. The jet, the jet, the jog wheels. But if I had to choose a controller to replace the SR2 that already exists, the Pioneer DJ 800. The DJ 800, I would definitely choose that. If oh, okay. uh, if I had to choose, if I had the money, I would definitely get the 800 since it already exists. Oh, well, there you go. And go full wow. on record. We've already been through an hour. We've already been through an hour already, guys. You know, we got through this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well, and I appreciate you guys' patience with me. Uh, and I appreciate you guys out there watching. If you're watching this out there, again, don't forget to follow the uh, <laughs> follow me here on Twitch and go over to YouTube. Tell me, and follow me on Twitch as well. And also follow me on Twitch as well. DJ Cool Thing. Uh, as you know, DJ Cool Thing, Cool Thing Entertainment over on YouTube. And don't forget to follow everyone else here. DJ Brettley, DJ, DJ Solstice. Uh, don't forget DJ Fire. Again, I thought he would be on this week, but I know he's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, and then uh, uh, Brettley, I uh, love Brettley. Um, Braylon, he is working again this week, and I'm hoping maybe next week he'll be on. Uh, next week we will have a guest DJ on here. So on the uh, that will no, yeah. No, the 21st. I'm sorry. Next week's the 14th. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> it's the seventh. Oh well, yeah. This week's the seventh. Again, this I, this I'm a, this this is sick brain, so I apologize. So the 21st, we have a guest DJ coming on. Uh, actually, one of uh, Hunter's uh, fans, but also he has a lot of followers on YouTube, and he's also a uh, teacher. So I'm looking forward to him coming on here. Who and, uh, you know, spreading some knowledge he has for his market and it's, it's information. Uh, he's in the Ohio area and uh, a lot of great information there. And hopefully, maybe by then, maybe next time we're here, uh, Hunter can spill the beans a little bit more. We had planned for music uh, for his 30th party and getting ready for that gig log. Yeah. Other than that, guys, appreciate you all for watching tonight. You guys have a good night and be safe. Peace.